Hello there, it's Joe the CRM Chap here and we're back with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the developer's exam for those who are looking to validate their skills uh, building solutions on top of or indeed extending out to the Power Platform. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how we can work with the Web API and this is going to be a sort of another series in a series. We're going to start off first of all in this video showing you how you can get set up to authenticate into the uh, Microsoft Data First Web API using a tool called Postman. So authentication is the first step that we need to do to work with the Data First API. And typically we can use uh, tools such as Postman to be able to sort of help us along in that sort of, um, you know, to test out our requests and just make sure that things are working as we expect them to. So what we want to do first of all is we want to navigate away from the Maker portal and instead we want to go out into Azure. Uh, and specifically the Azure Active Directory Admin Center. And within here, what we want to start to do is um, create what we call an application registration. Uh, using this, we can then uh, log in and authenticate to the Dataverse Web API um, uh, by specifying just some credentials within our uh, Postman configuration. So I'm just going to call this my PL400 uh, App Reg. Uh, as an example, um, we've got a few different options on here. Uh, typically, it will just be a single tenant that you want to set this up for. So you can leave that as a default option. Um, and in order to make sure that we can uh, work from Postman successfully with this, we just need to specify a redirect URI of localhost. Um, the value here doesn't really sort of matter too much. Um, that looked to be okay. Uh, let me just tap that in again. HTTP local localhost. Okay, it's been a glitch. Okay. Uh, so with that defined, we're going to click on register. It's going to create that fairly quickly for us, and then we're into the portal on here. And the first bit of important detail I want to grab is the client ID. I'm just going to put that onto my clipboard. I'm just going to paste it onto another screen so we can refer back to it in a few minutes. Um, I need to make some changes to the definition of the app registration, and I can do this via its manifest. The only thing I just need to change is that I want to enable implicit flow um, for this app registration because this will then allow me to authenticate using the client ID and also my uh, user login credentials from Postman. So I'll update that like so. Next I need to give the app registration uh, permission to um, impersonate users into my Dataverse environment and I do this by granting uh, API permission. So go into here, click on add a permission. Uh, this is still stored under the old uh, name Dynamic CRM, um, so just keep that in mind when you're searching for it. And we'll see down here that, yep, Dynamic CRM and, yep, two old names, Common Data Service as well. Um, so let's just double click on that to grant the permission for user impersonation. Now, simply granting the permission won't be sufficient. You'll also need to make sure that you grant admin consent. Now, this may be easier said than done based on uh, the type of tenant that you're working with. In this case, because I am a global admin, I can very easily just click on this tip box straight away, get this admin consent confirmed and then done and dusted. Uh, it may be that you'll have to, for um, production or for other environments, you'll, you'll need to liaise with the appropriate um, Active Directory administrator just to make sure that, that admin consent is granted. So that's all looking good now then. So the next thing I want to do is actually download Postman. So I can do this by going on to the uh, Postman website. Uh, and if I scroll right down to the bottom, I should see an option for uh, download, download app. So I'm just going to click on the button there. It's going to detect my version of Windows. I just want to go for the 64-bit one. So I can make full use of all the memory on this machine. And then we'll just give this just a few seconds to download. Okay, so we've got that now. So I'm just going to open up the file and just run the installation. Take just a few minutes now just to install. Okay, so the app's finished installing, so I can now uh, run it from my start menu. So just let that load up. Uh, one option with Postman is that you can potentially set up an account and then just synchronize everything across uh, between different devices. But in this case, I'm just going to skip this step. I'm going to go straight to the app. Okay. 
so we have this, a few different concepts in Postman that we have to get our head around. The first is the uh, environment. So this is where we can specify different sort of parameters, different sort of credentials, access details for what we're trying to access. So first of all, let's just set up an environment that's going to cover off um, everything that we need to get into our Dataverse tenant. So I'm just going to call this PL400 as an example. And then I need to just start populating this with the relevant details. So first of all, I need to uh, put in the URL. Um, of the particular environment, uh, which I can get by uh, going into my browser again, going out into the classic interface. Uh, and then we want to just grab this here. This is our uh, Dataverse environment URL. Um, so I'm just going to call this uh, URL uh, and I'm just going to paste that in like so. Then it should update accordingly. Uh, next, we need the client ID that we set up. Um, so I'm just going to again uh, enter the name of that as client ID and just paste in the GUID that we got from before. Version will, um, will be the one that we specify next. In this case, we want to provide 9.2. This is the version of the web API that we want to use. Uh, where possible, we want to make sure that we're using the latest version. And now we need to construct out dynamically the um, the full API URL and we can do this using sort of a mixture of sort of hard coded and then the existing variables that we specified already. So this will, this pattern on here will build out a full, um, full URL for us that it will connect up to our web API, which is quite nice. Callback, we need to put in uh, localhost. Um, that's the same uh, redirect um, URL that we specified on the app reg. Uh, and then finally auth URL, which is going to be the uh, the login.microsoftonline.com um, endpoint, which is where it's going to get the token from. And as part of that, we have to pass through the um, the name of the service or resource that we want to access, which in this case will be our Dataverse environment. So that's all looking pretty good. So I'm going to hit save on that. Um, and then next, what I want to do is build out a collection. A collection is just a group of, re of requests, effectively. It's just a container that we can use to... Um, bring it all together into an easy way. So I'm just going to call this one PL400 samples. Um, importantly, we have to make sure that we've linked our environment to the collection, like so. And with that done, we can then start to specify the top level authorization settings that will apply for all requests um, um, that are sort of built out in this collection. So in this case, we want to select um, authorization type of OAuth2. Uh, and then down here, we want to just populate the details based on what we have got um, above. So I'm just going to call this, my token name will just be PL400 as an example. Uh, the grant type will be implicit. Uh, our callback URL, we can just use the parameter from our uh, environment, like so, which is quite nice. And again, I can just type in all of the various different variables that we specified earlier. So I'm not having to repeat information each time. Um, Okay, so with that done, I can then click on the Get New Access Token button. It's going to open up a login prompt, and so I just need to log in um, and go through the usual uh, multi-factor authentication hurdles. Okay, so yep, that's all approved. Then we can see authentication is completed. We can hit on the Proceed button. And there's our access token on there. We can then pass that as part of our request through uh, to get into the particular endpoint. So we're going to hit the use token button. That's going to save that now. The token will have a sort of expiry. I think it's around two hours or something like that. So we may need to come back into here and generate a new token as and when we need one. Uh, but for now, um, the only other thing to do is just run just a quick um, test to make sure that, the, that our connection is working as intended. And we can do this by just doing a, a, a very simple who am I um, type request. So again, I can use my variables to very easily build out the, um, the URL that I want. And at the end of it, I'm just going to append on who am I, like so. Make sure that I've inherited the authorization settings from the parent. Hit the send button, and I should get... Uh, a response back. Uh, there is an error. Let me just check to see that there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'll be back in two seconds. Okay, so I think I've realized the problem. There's a slash at the end of the URL. I think that could be messing things up. So let me just um, update the environment accordingly. I will need to just uh, get myself a new access token. Uh, so again, just want to proceed on that, use the token. Okay, let's um, save that and let's just um, do our request again. 
Okay, all be okay. So it's just a problem with the URL then. So effectively, the Who Am I request is a really easy way that we can just confirm that things are working as expected. So in this case, we just get back details about uh, the current user who's accessing it. Um, so this is my uh, unique user ID that I'm using that I'm accessing the database as, as well as my business unit and organization ID. So we know that things are pretty working as we wanted to, and we can start to make further requests from here if we wanted to. So that wraps it up for this video. Um, next time we're going to look a bit deeper at the type of different requests that we can uh, um, work with into our environment. And we'll kick off first of all by looking at how we can use the, um, the global discovery URL to basically discover um, and find out details about the various Dataverse environments that we've got access to. Uh, but until then, I hope you found this video useful um, as part of your uh, uh, revision or preparation for the exam. Um, um, please like and subscribe to the channel uh, if you like and if you're enjoying the content and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.